Hello, deep and wide thinker. I uh, stumbled upon a fascinating story about wolves in Yellowstone National Park that kind of bubbled up an intriguing note-taking technique, which then turned into more note-taking techniques that I wanted to talk about with you. So I'm ready to pull the thread and unravel some deep and wide discoveries inspired by this little adventure that I had reading about these wolves. So here's a sneak peek at today's video. Uh, we are going to talk about why you should devour more stories. How nature is brimming with free wisdom. Three reasons to make bullet points your best friend. When to turn your note titles into questions and why. And then how information sent can guide you to write future-proof titles. A bunch of stuff in this video. I think you'll enjoy it. If you are into visual note-taking, if you are into Heptabase, I think you are going to really like this video and get some value out of it. I did want to say if you are new to Heptabase and you want to support my work, uh, I have a link in the description for you to sign up for a free seven-day trial to try out Heptabase. And uh, if you choose to subscribe, I'll earn a small commission off of that, helping me create more content like this. All right. So to start off, I was reading this book, The Hidden Life of Trees, and I barely scratched the surface. I actually was reading the sample version of this book just to see if I wanted to continue reading it, and I do want to read this book. But I was reading this book, The Hidden Life of Trees, and the first thing that I want you to take away is we want to read about and spend lots of time in nature, right? It is packed with wisdom for a life that is well-lived. I want to pause just for a moment here and give you a free gift for hanging out with me today. This is a short PDF guide on how to get insights from the nonfiction books that you read and that you love into your PKM system. By the end of this guide, you'll have a simple system for highlighting your books, a mindful approach for adding content to your PKM system or PKM notes app, a process for creating building blocks of knowledge for the future, and then a simple tip for making more connections between your notes. The link to the free guide is in the description below. It could be possible that your next big idea may come from how beavers build their homes. All right, we see it all the time where we look at other industries and the problem that you've been trying to solve or that industry is trying to solve is then it just sparks an idea because they see something done in a different industry that they want to try in their own industry. So why is it any different for nature? Why is it any different for learning about animals and trees and all that? So that's what got me on this whole uh, life of trees right here, the hidden life of trees was because I, I believe wholeheartedly that nature has so much to offer uh, when it comes to wisdom and just ideas on how you can better your life. So to pay attention to these little things. All right, so I was intrigued by the story of the wolves at Yellowstone. And it was, it was something like this. Yellowstone National Park around 1920-ish, uh, the wolves left for 70 years, and this disturbed the whole ecosystem, right? The elk were now free to go eat at all the trees, eat away at all the trees, causing the beavers to not have lodging materials, and then the rivers to grow wild. Well, then the wolves came back, and they reestablished the order. They were there to make sure that the elk weren't completely taking away the trees so that the, the beavers could have their homes, the rivers were not going crazy, and it turns out that the wolves, right here, are great stewards. Which brings me to my next point. Stories always carry a lesson, even if it's not intentional. All right, so we want to make an effort to read great stories and then extract lessons and meaning from those stories. Right. It, it was already pretty cool to read about this here, um, as it has to do with the hidden life of trees. But I thought, how does this apply to my life? Right. What is the lesson that I can take away from my life as I'm reading about this story? So read more stories. Fiction, nonfiction, 
there's lessons tucked away. There's wisdom tucked away in these stories. And we want to make an effort to read great stories. So, all right. So I jotted this down, uh, this whole area right here in my journal on that day that I read the book, which you can see here. Uh, let's see, August 9th. Yep. About two weeks ago, I read this, came across this, and decided to create uh, a card for it and on that journal, on that day. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, you know that I like bullet points, but I want to discuss why I like bullet points, right? Three reasons that I use bullet points. Number one, they visually organize your thoughts. Right here, you can see it <laughs> on this card, how it's visually organized. Uh, let me show you the difference, right? So if I take these three and I turn them into just text. Okay. I have the same three ideas right here without bullet points, but you can see that it's a little bit harder to visually see where they stop and start. So by taking all of these and simply putting it in bullet points, it magically turns it, it, this is so simple, magically turns it into a more visually easy to understand way. So they visually help you, they visually organize your thoughts. Number two, they help you distill ideas since usually bullet points are shorter in nature. You normally don't see paragraphs in bullet points. So I like the idea of making small chunks of text and writing it in bullet points so that I can just go bam, 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 and knock them out and read them. Um, and then number three, they're easy to scan when you go back and review. When I go back and review my notes, I love the bullet points. This is one of the greatest inventions, in my opinion, is the bullet point. Okay, so I jotted it down in the journal. I used bullet points to write what I could remember. And then as I considered this story right here, um, I had that question come up because I was considering it in, in the context of my life. And, and, and the idea that I was considering is wolves are great stewards. And, and the fact that when they left, things were falling apart, right? And then when they came back, it was restored. So my question that I thought of was, what in your life is breaking because you're not stewarding, stewarding it well? In the parentheses, the, the wolves at Yellowstone. Then I thought, why not make the question right here, the title with the story as the context in the note card. Okay, so I have the title of this note card right here is the question. The first thing that I'm gonna see as I'm scanning note cards is the title, okay? And when I look at the title, I wanna make sure that I have a clear title. Now let's talk about the question like why, why make it a question? Questions are powerful because they naturally get you to think, right? And in two years from now, when I come back across this card, this is still going to be relevant to me because there's always going to be some way that I can better manage my life. I can better manage or take care of my, my kids or take care of my marriage or take care of my health. What in my life is breaking right now because I'm not stewarding it well, right? They, they get you to think. Questions get you to think. And questions are future proof, which I just talked about. Now, as I considered this, this note right here, turn your, turn your notes, turn your note titles into questions for your future self. I actually realized I've done this more than I actually realize. Um, I have some more examples here. So this note card is titled, How Many Loves Do You Have? And it's a reminder for me uh, to look at what I have in my life and to ask God to bless what I have and to do the best that I can with what I have, right? Uh, and the whole note is, uh, is about this story in the Bible where it's Jesus and his disciples and the there's a crowd of people, 5,000 people or whatever, um, and, and the disciples are like, they're getting hungry. What are we going to do? Like, what are we going to eat? Uh, and Jesus asks, well, what do you have? What, what do you have? 
and they answer, well, we have five loaves and two fish, but there's no way that we can we can make that work with as many people that we have. But the question here, how many loaves do you have, is a reminder to me, right? I have the context. I have the 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 actual source text from the Bible. I have my thoughts, and as you can see, I'm using bullet points so I can easily scan and easily go through this. But I have this question before it, I even get into the context. How many loaves do you have? In a conversation with a friend, you know, uh, and, and they're they're struggling, trying to figure out how, you know, I don't I don't have as much time. I don't have you know, five hours a day to write on the on the book that I want to write. Well, how much time do you have? Do you have 10 minutes? All right, what are you doing with that 10 minutes? So how many loaves do you have? That's one example. When was the last time you had a great conversation? Another future proof, uh, just a great question that I can ask myself often. This is just an amazing reminder about the value of conversations uh, and specifically deep conversations. I need to ask myself this often. When was the last time that you had a great conversation? Because I notice when I have great conversations, I feel better, right? It's a great medicine for the heart. Here's another question example. When was the last time you did something for the first time? As you can see, I created this on May 14th, 2021. And uh, this was three years ago now. Uh, at the time of this video and I just wrote I noticed that when I do things for the first time I find a lot of treasure so I can come back to this card I can read the title when was the last time you did the when was the last time you did something for the first time and if it's, if it's been a while I need to do something for the first time I need to experience something new to wake my brain up to spark ideas to get those creativity muscles going All right. So hopefully you're, you are catching what I'm, what I'm trying to talk about here when it comes to making the titles of your notes questions. Not every single note needs to be a question, but they are super valuable. Uh, the one thing that I did want to point out here is that I added in parentheses, I, I mentioned this earlier, but the wolves at Yellowstone in the title of the note. So without actually having to go into the note, I can read the title and instantly be reminded of why I wrote this question and what would the, like what the context was. Um, I could go into the note and I could read through it, but I probably would remember this story of the wolves at Yellowstone. Now that leads to my next point. You can help your future self by making clear and specific titles for your notes. In information architecture, uh, you would call this information sent. So the more clear a like a, a website link label is or a button label is, um, the more confident the user is on where this button will take them. We've all experienced that when we, we click on a link and, well, I guess we call this clickbait. We click on a link because it says one thing, but when I get to the page or when I get to the YouTube video or when I get to wherever I'm going, it is not, it's not lining up with what the, the link actually said. That's right. So that's poor information sent. What we want is it meeting or exceeding our expectations. I see a, a note title, right? That is specific. Maybe it's a question, but it is specific and clear. And when I go into the note, it aligns with the title that I've written for it. So I can lead myself into more discovery by writing great titles, specific titles, information sent. If you want to look it up and learn more about that, it's a really cool concept. All right, so that is five tips there for note taking based on one little note uh, from the Yellowstone Wolves. You want to read about and spend lots of time in nature. You want to turn your note titles into questions. You want to read more stories. Stories always carry lessons that we can learn from. You want to make your titles specific and clear using great information sent, and then use bullet points in your notes. All five note-taking lessons. Hope this was helpful, and I would love if you have any questions on Heptabase, or if you have questions on visual note-taking or any of these five, 
Or if you want to add anything to these uh, or have your special way of taking notes uh, or adding questions, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you next time.